let me give you a quick overview about the 10 year plan. This is something that I wrote, I, I think it might have been like three or four years ago I wrote this that you know, and then I, I think I've rewritten it since is a very spacious and doable plan if someone were starting with no business, no audience, um, no clarity about what it is they want to offer. Basically, if someone came out of the womb as a baby, but miraculously knew how to type and go on the internet. So if that was the case, and then going from that to 10 years later, they are fully, well, I, I never want to say fully clear because we are never fully clear. We're always gaining more, deeper, better clarity about our purpose calling and it never it never gets fully clear. Um, at every stage, we're like, I know there's more or I'm still shocked that I'm not so good at that. You know, every single stage, whether it's year zero or year 5,000. Um, so, but at year 10, you are semi-retired uh, with a, an amazing business that, and you have a team and things are automated. A lot of things are automated. So that's the 10 year plan vision. And you can either take the 10 year plan and literally go year by year and, and do it year by year, or you could do it as a 10 stage plan and try to squeeze it into like four years or something like that. And, uh, some of you are saying, God, I've been doing this for more than 10 years now. <laughs> I'm only on year two <laughs> or year three. And that's okay. Uh, now that you have the 10 year plan, hopefully you'll be able to make uh, even more focused progress. Um, but I do think 10 years is reasonable and uh, likely uh, for, for most of us who are doing it step by step. And, you know, this is not usually what you hear from. You know, other business experts, entrepreneurial teachers will say, oh, 10 day plan to get you to six figures from you were, you were just born yesterday and now you're going to have a million dollar business in 12 days. Um, and that's, or even in 12 months, I think it's completely ridiculous. I think they have, they have no, um, yeah, I think they're just hyping you up. They're just taking your $2,000 so they can sell you a a hyped up plan that's not realistic. So let's, um, again, let me let me go ahead and chat the link below for those who have not seen this before. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick, and any questions along the way, I'm just gonna talk, you know, but any questions, please chat below because that's gonna be more interesting, I think, for all of us. So uh, let me go ahead and show you my screen and we will kind of walk through this here briefly. You know, this video on the page already um, walks you through it. I, I rewrote it in 2021. I think I first wrote it in 2018 or something. But anyway, uh, it's good because ever since a couple of years when I wrote it, I'm looking at this. I'm like, yep, <laughs> it's it's pretty accurate. So let me go ahead and, and show you uh, what I mean. So year one is focused on building an audience and building clarity by posting publicly, public journaling is year one, public journaling. How do you get, how do you figure out the purpose of your life? Not through journaling privately or by working with a life coach or spiritual mentor, in my opinion. Uh, let me, let me clear, let me, I'm sorry, let me, let me clear. Purpose of your life is bigger issue and that's, you can read spiritual books about that. But um, what, how do you discover the purpose of your work? What kind of work you're meant to be doing? What kind of business you're meant to be having? What kind of service you're meant to provide in the world? What kind of products you're meant to? Do you do that by working with a business coach, a career coach? No. I mean, sure, that might be helpful in some way, but you figure out the purpose of your work by putting a bunch of stuff out there, seeing what flops and seeing what succeeds. Nope. I mean, not enough people tell you this. Now that I've been around for 12, 13 years doing this stuff and helping people with the purpose of their work, this is what I've discovered. You don't discover purpose by journaling on your own or working with a coach or working with a group of fellow entrepreneurs. I mean, yes, a group starts to get better. You have to find the purpose of your work by putting a lot of stuff out there, a lot of half-assed, half-baked things out there, seeing what flops and seeing what succeeds. Even half-baked or quarter-baked things will succeed if it's a good match with what the market is wanting at this time. 
the truth. I am willing to put that out as capital T, the truth, absolute truth. At least that's what I've seen. In my, <laughs> so everything's relative. But it's it's like, oh my God, if I could just, if I could, if I, if this is the last moment you'll ever see me alive, this is the one message I want to share with you. Even 10% baked thing put out into the market, that's a good match with the market, will sell more and get more engagement, likes, comments, shares, if it's free thing, if it's a sold thing, it'll sell more than a 100% baked thing that is not the, not the right match of the market. It really is like this. This really is like this. And I just wish all of you would put more 10% baked things out there. I just wish that I just that's and then I'm ready to die now because that's that's the that's the most important message I could share in my entrepreneurial teaching. Um, it's about the match. It's not about how perfect you are or how polished you are or how blah, 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 I don't care. So whether so this is why in year one, we start with authentic content marketing, because you have no effing idea what the purpose of your work is in year one. OK. And you just have to put out as much things. Am I supposed to talk about dog training? I don't know. I don't know what the purpose of my life is, my purpose of my career. Am I supposed to talk about flower arrangement? Am I supposed to talk about, um, you know, how to shoot photography if I'm really interested in that? Am I supposed to talk about, um, you know, spiritual uh, healing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm good at until I try it out. I don't know what the market thinks I'm good at until I put it out there in front of everybody. And if year one, you have no market. Yes, you do. Your market is your friend, Sally, your auntie, May, your classmate, Bob. That's your market. Your Facebook friends is year one. Your market is your Facebook friends. You've got 100 Facebook friends in year one. That's your market right now. That's good enough of a test. And then you start building it up and you might use Facebook business page. You might use a YouTube channel. You might use LinkedIn, Medium, Twitter, TikTok, whatever you want to use, whatever, Instagram, anything you want to use. Year one is about putting all the, all the stuff out there you could do. Dog training videos, spiritual healing articles, flower arrangement images. It doesn't matter if Auntie May thinks you're a damn flake. What the hell are you doing with your life with flower arrangement and dog training and spiritual healing? I don't care, Aunt May. You can judge me all you want at Thanksgiving. What I'm doing is following good advice about entrepreneurship is putting as much out there as I can and seeing what resonates with, with people and resonates with me. I'm trying to figure out what resonates with me by talking about it and resonates with Auntie May and classmate Bob and you know my best friend, uh, Joanne. Or you know I, I'm just trying stuff. Year one, you got to put stuff out there. You know, and um, ten percent baked stuff out there. Okay, you have to. Otherwise, how will you figure it out? You're going to talk to a career coach. A career coach is one opinion, one opinion. You need a hundred opinions, and then you need it because I'm a data driven guy. I mean, you, I wish all of you were more data driven. It's like you have to see what the market really and what you, after a hundred experiences, go. You know what? Wow, I'm really into flower arrangement. I, I'm that's that's it. I'm going to do that for the next six months. See what happens. And not just me, but the market. The people think I'm really good at it. Awesome. Let me keep doing it. You know, Auntie May is not ADD enough. We have to be ADD in the year one. How the hell are we going to explore if we're not ADD? All right, ADHD. I'm sorry. I don't mean to deep, I don't mean to diminish it, but there's a benefit to being all over the place in year one. You have to, right? Don't focus on a niche in year one. Are you kidding me? You know, you have no idea what, what your niche might even be, right? And then year two, um, you, you, you start going, wow, year one, people really want me to do flower arrangement or spiritual healing, or they want me to, you know, um, clean their house you know, or declutter their offices. I don't know, or teach them how to. They want, they want me to teach them yoga. Okay, all right, year two, I'm going to do one-on-one -on -one yoga training, one-on-one -on -one yoga, yoga teaching, okay? You're, you're one because it's easier to make money when you're doing one-to-one -one stuff. Selling online courses is not easy to make money. It's not. Group programs are not easy to make money unless you have a big enough audience. Much easier. It's much easier to get five people to decide to pay you $500 a month. I'll say that again. It's much easier to get five people to pay you $500 a month, which is $2,500 a month, versus getting 
25 people to pay you 100 a month. And it's even harder to get 100 people to pay you $25. You're, you're making 2,500 a month or 2,500 with all those options, but just much easier to get five people. Auntie May says, all right, fine. I'll, I'll give your yoga thing a try. I think you're really good at it and I'll pay you 500 for that. Thank you, Auntie. Hey, my classmate, Bob said, you know what? Yeah, I, I trust you. We've been, we've been through class together. I think you're good at this. Let's, let me pay you 500 for this. Okay. Year three is where you go, okay, I think I'm kind of maxed out on one-on-one -on -one at this time. I've got my five one-on-one -on -one clients and I think it's time to explore doing a group program and maybe also write a book because I've got so much content from two years of authentic content. I've got at least 15,000 words ready for a book. By the way, those of you who are watching this right now, I'm launching a book in the next four weeks. I'm following my own block to book plan. It's going it's to be called uh, Soul Gym. And um, the book is... Uh, the book is going to be 5,000 words. I'll let that sink in for a moment. I'm going to launch a 5,000 word. I mean, 5,000 word includes the intro. It includes a book survey chapter. Includes a, anyway, it's going to be like 4,500 words for the book. So if you have 15,000 words written, you can curate that down to a 5,000 word book. And it'll, be, it'll have more reviews than longer books because people review books when they've finished reading them. So anyway, so, so yes, um, year three group program means, hey, I've got my five clients. I think I'm ready to try a group experience. So uh, I'm, when the sixth person wants to work with me, I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Instead of um, working with the one-to-one, -one, I'm kind of maxed out right now. I have a group program, a small group program. It's going to be six people. It's you and my other five clients and uh, blah, blah, blah. So that's the that's year three. You, you, you start creating group experiences and see how that goes. Year four, you take your small group experiences and you record them into online courses. Uh, well, the parts that you're able to record, sometimes small group cannot be recorded um, because of private stuff. But uh, the teaching part can be recorded and you turn them into online courses um, that people can buy. Now you've got, you know, 20 people in a group and you can sell online courses, do it yourself online, you know, yoga videos or whatever to uh, the next 20 people who inquire with you. So, hey, you know what? Why don't you start my do-it-yourself yoga class uh, or do-it-yourself flower arrangement class or do-it-yourself, you know, declutter your office class, okay? That's year four. Year five, at this point, you have, you know, 20 people, uh, you know, on average, 20 people a month buying your classes, or you've got a group program going, and now you're ready to kind of, you know what, uh, maybe not, to, maybe, maybe you're getting 10 people a month buying your classes. I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter what the number is, isn't it? but year five is where you're like, okay, I now have experience doing the group thing. I'm now doing the one-on-one -on -one thing. I've now done, I've now done the, um, the online course thing. I'm ready to kind of grow my audience even more so I can sell more courses. So at this point, year five, you, you start learning how to do paid ads because you have, you have some extra money now. You have extra money to run the paid ads and to learn automation like with Zapier and things like that. So year five, you're scaling your online course sales with ads and automation. Year six, you now have, uh, you now have had dozens of people go through your group program and online courses. And you can now choose your, your, your most supportive uh, group participants and, and students and train them as mentees that you, that you pay or volunteer. It could be volunteer mentees. You could, like, for example, um, in my, in my in, well, in TLC, I'm, I'm paying six people, as you all know, to be TLC helpers. And in my MasterHeart program, I, I'm paying uh, 14 people. Uh, to have groups of five. Uh, we started that at the beginning of the year. The TLC helper thing was honestly, I, I have to be admit, a, a, to, to admit a, a kind of a mess because I didn't start out the year with it. I wish I had. And I think I probably, probably need to relaunch a TLC helper thing, but I'm paying them, you know, for, um, for the stuff. So I'm training mentees to kind of start um, supporting the group experiences. And I'm also like in my online courses now, I also now pay, um, pay at least one helper per course to like look at the chat and help me with that kind of stuff. And uh, my cat is saying, why, why don't you pay me? You know, cause she's here all the time. She knows all my material and she's, uh, she's not happy that the door's closed right now, but I'm not going to open it. 
right now. And my wife just like by force just woke up and <laughs> said, all right, all right, cat, what do you want? All right. Um, so let me see about the chat here. I'm going to just bring forth a couple of chat messages. Really uh, appreciate like Rowena says, I'm now starting to put out more of the more of the half baked, a uh, little baked things. And I love the feeling of the confidence it brings. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, the more you practice putting out the less baked something is, the less edited an article, the less, the more off the cuff a video, the more, um, yeah, the more you're willing to go live on video, the more little baked things you put out there, things that are not ready, the more you build your confidence. And the more you also realize, because like, look, you could either go, I'm going to try being less prepared and less polished and see what happens in the world. It's scary. I know I'm shaking right now, but I'm click publish. And then you're like, no, I didn't die. Oh, people didn't hate me for it. Oh, people didn't unsubscribe. Well, yeah, some people always unsubscribe. That's normal. But not everyone unsubscribe. <laughs> it's okay. And then you just build a little more confidence. You're like, heck. I could put half baked things out there and I, I can still live and I could still build an audience that way. It's amazing. My God, it saves so much time. It's true. <laughs> it saves a lot of time. And you'll find the secret the half baked things are enough to test the market to see what they want. It's amazing. Okay. Another comment Arden, Arden Reese says, My former business, Wardrobe 911, I blogged every day for, for a year to crickets. Amazing. Oh my gosh, Arden, I so. I so appreciate you saying that because I also, I was only willing to make videos for uh, three or four months with, with crickets before I moved on to something else, but um, I did less videos after that. But a year is, is truly amazing. I, I wish all of us could have this kind of staying power, blogging or videoing for a year with no no comments, no no responses. Can you do that? If you could do that, you'll win. Truly, it's really, it's really that. It's like, if you can, the longer you can go, with putting stuff out there, with nobody responding, the more likely you're going to be successful. Because let's let's see what Arden wrote. Arden wrote, and then one day, I got a comment, and I knew that the content resonated. So I started doing a what to wear series. I guess maybe that's what the comment was about, and it blew up. That was back when I was blogging was new, but it was still it was quite a ride. Yes, that was awesome, amazing. What a great, what a great story. Okay. And then Ellie says, I have an inner voice saying, yeah, but you're not, you're not new to your business. So you can't afford to be messy with content now. Oh, I so appreciate that question. Absolutely. That's true. Um, a lot of us are, have experiences, obviously, because we wouldn't want to, we, we don't want to, we wouldn't want to be putting services out there. We didn't have some experiences or training or knowledge of something. So we feel like we're already above average understanding about a particular area. And um, so we don't want to look messy. Now, this is so interesting because I just had someone write me. Uh, she was watching my YouTube channel and she's, and she's like, she's like, George, I hope I didn't offend you with that comment because I didn't realize until I looked into you further that you're really established. You're not a newbie like me, you know? And, and I, and I, and she said, um, I hope I didn't, I'm like, Wow, thank you for saying that. I'm really curious what made you think I'm a newbie. And she said, well, maybe it's just your casual nature and your approachability and the fact that you respond to emails so quickly. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm like I'm much more organized than most established people are, so I can respond to emails more quickly. Um, <clears throat> and my YouTube channel is doesn't reflect how established I am because my YouTube channel usually gets like zero comments or one comment or whatever. And, but you look at my Facebook and Instagram, you're like, what? This guy's borderline famous no, not really not really famous but but i've got an affiliate i've got an affiliate community of 200 people i've got 200 affiliates i mean most established people don't even have 30 affiliates you know what i mean like like i'm very established right in in my business i make you know I, it doesn't matter but i make 200k plus a year um it, it's like most like, really i thought you were making like five dollars an hour look at look at how you dress and look at how few comments you get you know and it's like, and yet I'm still willing to be imperfect and messy out there and, and, and approachable essentially. And so maybe, maybe Ellie, you could, uh, sorry, Al, Al Ellie, uh, you could tell me how you pronounce that. Um, you could think about it this way, being messy isn't being messy, it's being approachable. 
Because other people like me who are established, it, they wear suits or they're more polished. They have a video logo in the beginning. <laughs> Looks really cool. Like, oh my God, this is a company. This is, a, you know, this is not just a one person business. This is a company. He always says, we, when you work with us, it's just them, you know, it's just him and his cat, right? When you work with us, you get, you get the most, you get the top industry knowledge of them. Bullshit. It's all bullshit, right? It's like, yeah, I've been in business for six months. I'm not going to tell you that. When you work with us and polished lo video logo and great website and everything, you know, industry knowledge, be bullshit stuff. Anyway, so <laughs> I've been around 12, 12 years. I actually know industry knowledge, industry experience. So in other words, um, here's Al, what you can say is if you ever feel you need credibility, right? You can always briefly mention in my 12 years of training or my, in, my, in the training that I just completed, or uh, after having helped dozens of people in this area, you can just kind of briefly put those little nug nuggets out there. I'm not, I just wasn't born yesterday. I've been doing this stuff for longer than you have. So please listen to me, you know, kind of thing. So it's just little ways to put credibility out there, I think is, is probably, uh, probably enough here. So Arden mentioned that she was able to grow the blog to 50,000 visitors. Yeah, that's amazing. Regularly, that's amazing, awesome. A couple questions here um, says, uh, so 10 years, the whole, some of you are like 10 year plan. My God, let me actually quickly, quickly walk through the rest of the 10 year plan. Year seven training mentees to help year seven. Oh, sorry. Year six, year seven, hiring your assistant. Like this is now more of a consistent mentee. And I'm, I'm starting to do that. I've got, I've got a longtime fan who is now, you know, kind of like I'm, I'm having him do various things. So he's kind of like a, uh, as close to an assistant as, as I would call it now. And then year eight, larger joint ventures. You're now you've got a you've got a, a support now to do larger ventures. You might you know have a joint venture with Sounds True or Hay House or 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 other um, larger companies that could bring you on as a guest teacher. You know that kind of thing. Um, year nine is you, you're having your assistant or your team document your systems. Um, like okay, this is how you launch courses. Like they're going to document things very very. Perfectly. You, you've probably been documenting along the way if you've been following my hat manual system, but but year nine is where you could have your assistant do it even more uh, carefully so that uh, if your assistant ever leaves, they will, trust me, um, you can have the documentation or the video trainings to give to the next person to, to run your run your business. And then by this point, you're, you're pretty much semi-retired. You're making <laughs> six figures, seven figures, whatever it is, you're semi-retired. And year 10, you just... Commit to continually improving your systems and your ability to serve your clients. You just do that forever. And um, some of you are like, oh my God, 10 years. I'm, I feel so old already. Am I going to even be alive in 10 years? Um, yes, you will. I almost guarantee you will be alive in 10 years and not have dementia yet. Uh, and um, if you want to do it faster, you can. The 10 year plan could be compressed into four-year plan you just have to break up the the plan into into you know uh four years times to 48 months so about five months per stage you know which is reasonable actually to be honest that's a reasonable uh for for those who are like uh you know really going to go at it uh or or maybe you situate yourself in a certain part of the plan so you know i already have an audience i've been doing content for a while i already have one-on-one -on -one. Uh, now I probably need to start doing group programs. Oh, I already have one-on-one -on -one group programs. I mean, now I need to really launch online courses. Ooh, I already have all those, all three things. Now I maybe really need to start scaling with ads and automation. And um, question here about using Facebook ads to find potential new clients. Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, if you want to, if you want, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you want to go faster, you would already use Facebook ads in year one to grow an audience for your art, for your, for your content. You don't have anything to sell in year one or stage one, you have nothing to sell, but you can use Instagram ads, Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, et cetera, to just get more readers, to get more viewers. And then by year, by stage two, when you're ready for one-on-one -on -one services, now you've got a bunch of people who have been looking at your stuff for a while, and then you can run ads and say, Hey, I'm available to serve you and one-on-one -on -one, and they'll be so amazed at that. And, and some of them will take you up on that. 
Uh, Kim asked a very sophisticated question here. Do we do market surveys in the first year as well as a way to narrow the experimentation? Yes. <laughs> Those of you who know my stuff know that I love doing market research, market surveys, polling. Yes, if you're if you're savvy enough on that stuff, market research stuff, do it as early as you can. It'll definitely narrow down what what you want. But you need you need enough ideal readers, you know, people who are like, yeah, you know, I want to work with. Maybe Aunt May is not my ideal reader, ideal viewer. She's just a supportive family member. She likes everything I post. Not really the ideal person. But maybe my classmate Sally seems like I can imagine her as a client for some of my services, whether it's dog training or flower arrangement. I think classmate Sally is more the kind of person I'll be working with. Who knows? Maybe the Aunt May would be. I don't know. So, so if you're not sure yet, keep going until you're like, you know, I think I have some sense of it. And now let me do the surveys on those people that I would love to work with. You know, people I'd love to have as friends. It's a good way of saying these are my ideal clients. You know, people like like to have as friends. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. And uh, please do comment below with any questions. And then we can continue talking about this 10-year plan in the comments below or in the upcoming Q&A calls. So thanks for being here. I hope this is inspiring and look forward to seeing, uh, seeing our, our journey together in this way. So. All right, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your day and evening and see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.